Hi everyone, I'm Shelly Dressel and tonight is one of my channels with the Universal Light Beings. Today um, is April 10th, 2024 and we'll see what's going to happen. I'll just chat for a couple of minutes here as people jump into the room. Alexander always collects some questions so we'll answer questions plus I know they all three have something to say because um, we finally had that that big eclipse on Monday how are you guys doing after that are you are you feeling okay Alexander and I were just talking that I mean I'm like so tired just completely drained I've been sleeping pretty well at night but who still feels so tired and headaches and things like that hey Judy good to see you Deborah thank you welcome um, Borowski burger hey He's always, he or she, I can't tell, is always making comments or thumbs up on the daily messages. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, so, anyway, we're just plugging right along through the year. I was just saying to Alexander, I'm so glad that I'm retired. Um, I, I only had slight reservations way back in January just because it was a change in routine. But now I'm like thrilled because especially this week, you know. I don't have to go anywhere. I I think, well, Monday I, I, I went and saw the eclipse with a friend of mine because I didn't have a good way to see it. Plus, they were repaving my road. And um, But then yesterday I stayed home the whole day. Today I had one errand to run. And, I mean, I'm just like laying low and taking it easy. Okay, so um, what to say, what to say. We just had the Goddess Light meditation. You know, I have the two websites, goddesslight.net and crystallinetransformations.com. The ULBs are part of Crystalline Transformations. And um, the, the Goddess of Creation is my original website. And that was the original thing that I started channeling. Um, and so that's goddesslight.net. The meditation this past Sunday night was right there in the midst of all that eclipse energy. It was amazing. It was about really being present in that energy, letting it create changes for you, clearing. So um, you can go to goddesslight.net. It's right there on the home page, and you can click on that, and you can um, listen to it. You can download it, whatever you would like to do. It's also on um, YouTube, Rumble, uh, Facebook, um, probably put it on, on, um, what do you call it? Telegram. I'm, as you know, I had said one of my intentions for the, for this year was to do more with Instagram, but as yet I have not done that. So one of these days, <laughs> one of these days I'll do that. Uh, anyway, so what's next? That's, I think going to be a big part of what they talk about with us this evening is what's next. And um, I know everyone, everyone, everyone is asking about the disclosure. When is that going to be out and made public to the entire world so that there's no more questions about it? There's no, you know, there's no one wondering what happened. Where did it come from? Where's it going? And that is coming. I just can't help but feel it's, it's, it's right there. So hopefully it won't be long. Um, but otherwise, uh, I think I'm just going to jump into it because these tend to be kind of long. And whoever, you know, whenever people show up, they'll um, they'll just pick up where I am. Uh, I'm not seeing anyone from Rumble. Is there anyone in Rumble that can do me a high five, please? And uh, let me just make sure that it's working in Rumble. I have the check mark that it is. So hopefully. Um, so it's streaming live in, in Facebook and Rumble. What I did do the last time, I didn't stream it because I don't know if that's what caught YouTube's attention, but I did upload the whole hour and a half or nine, whatever length it was, and no problems at all. So I'll put this on YouTube, but I just won't stream it to YouTube. Okay, there's a couple of people. Thanks, Ken. And um, Laurie, it looks like, and Angie70. Thank you. Okay, so Rumble's working just fine, too. I'm so happy to have you all here. Um right so there were some amazing pictures of the eclipse uh we were very fortunate uh that i was very fortunate that i was able to see it now i did see the one in 2017 and it literally got dark light night you know because we were 100 percent in that energy and that was when the energies of avalon came back in you know they were anchoring back into the earth plane so that was a really super powerful one this time we had 88 percent um covered 
but it barely got dark at all. So I found that was really interesting. We, um, my, my daughter said that she had like an old phone. She put on like a slow time, time release or whatever to see the darkness coming in in the yard. And it was like no change. <laughs> so I don't know how that all works, but I do know that it was incredibly intense. It was a beautiful, beautiful energy. Did you see the one picture that I posted in the email that I sent out today where the sun itself was white, you know, just a bright white light. And uh, I think other people on here have said, have you noticed the sun is white? So that was the first time that I had noticed that, but I just took a picture of the sun itself. And then you know, I, there, I've, I've seen people say, oh, it's a scam. You don't need to wear the glasses. Well, here's the thing. And I was there. When I didn't wear the glasses, all I saw was that bright white sun that you saw. When I put the glasses on, then I could see the entire eclipse. It made everything black except for the light of the sun. Um, and so it made it, It you know, it, it worked beautifully the way that it, the way that it did. Um, hang on here. I'm getting hot. I need to turn the air make it a little bit cooler so hold on just a second here yeah it's too hard okay so anyway um i think the eclipse did what it was supposed to do and i think it did and activate uh parts of people's dna's and i'm sure someone's going to talk about that today and so we will see what's coming okay all right everything looks so much brighter you know Okay, I have to agree a hundred percent. Now we had rain yesterday, and but I I literally looked out at the leaves and I thought, man, I didn't notice the leaves being such a color of green before, and I didn't notice the grass being such a color of green before. So it's very interesting that you say that. I thought it was just because it had rained, but you're absolutely right. I am prob we are probably seeing things through less density you know things are probably much more transparent so thanks for sharing that um karen i i believe that's absolutely true and uh, because i literally did think it myself i just you know was 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 going with the old energy duh why was i doing that okay so um what else to say oh if you do want to have a channel with me or something like that, you can go to either website. It says a private session with Shelly. We're this close to having a calendar set up. And um, and then at that point, it'll be even easier for you because then you can choose what day and time you want to do. Hey, Maggie, how are you doing? Home from the hospital, but in bed in Melbourne are the perfect topic. Thank you. Yeah, Maggie and I had been... Um, talking back and forth. Well, she's done a lot of sessions. I've known her, what, three or four years now? Anyway, she had, had been in the hospital, so I'm glad you're home. Hope everything is well. Okay, well, let's jump into it and see what's what. Greetings. It is I, Crystalia. And I come to you first because I want each of you to do something, whether you're doing this later or right here in real time. Everyone close your eyes for a minute. And I'm making my presence known to each one of you. And just out of curiosity, can any of you tell a difference? Do you feel my presence more fully? Can you um, discern anything more about me than you usually did. I'm just flowing my energy into and around each one of you, again, whether you're live or later. And I just put forth that intention that no matter when you listen to this, you will be able to connect with me. Right. So my perception, of course, y'all can talk now. I mean, open your eyes now. You certainly don't need to keep them closed the whole time. My perception is I am much more present with you than I have been before. You know how I have spoken about how it's been layer upon layer upon layer that needed to be cleared. And, and then I was able to come in much more fully so as to participate in all these things. That being said, as I'm manifesting now much more fully, uh, in fact, Shelly, as she's looking at me is saying, Hey, I hadn't really noticed a shape. Um, her perception of me has always just been like, 
um, oranges, yellow, golds, you know, different colors that just kind of morph one to the other. And I've just been this, this cloud of energy. And now she was just saying that the perception since Monday is that there's more of, of a shape of a, of a human. So that is not my normal intrinsic shape. My normal is probably that, that, that flow of energy that she was talking about. However, I am manifesting more of a physical body so as to be able to communicate with all of you easier or make it a little bit easier for um, for people to discern who I am because I, I know the majority are not accustomed to seeing just a flow of energy. Um, I see a blue light beam. Awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. And um, And Karen says, yes, I can see a difference. Indeed, I think it'll just get stronger and stronger and stronger for each one of you. And um, I do know, for me, I can say there is much greater clarity as I'm coming in at, at this time than there has been before. So I truly appreciate that you guys are the one that are anchoring this energy for everything. Um, I'm seeing shoots of light filtering around my room. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, your feedback. And, and when people talk about how they perceive an energy, what that does frequently, if someone says, oh, I don't see anything, I don't feel anything. But what it's doing is it's triggering something inside of them that they don't associate with what that is. And so it actually helps other people when um, when you share your thoughts or when you share your experiences. And this is how the, the whole group grows from one to another. Okay. Now, um, so getting back to this, we... Um, okay. They might want to talk about it, but I'm going to say it here. The eclipse was everything that we had anticipated that it would be. In some parts of the, the world, it actually came in even stronger than we had hoped for. In other parts of the world, it was not quite as strong as what, as what we were anticipating. But the overriding energy, the overriding balance and flow came in without a hitch. There was there was no problem and, and it all did exactly as we had anticipated that it would. There are going to be my group of of the of the crystalline energies has been growing and growing and growing. Now that the earth has gotten to the place where it is, there will probably be even more that come from the multiverse, as you call it, or the omniverse is another way of calling it. And uh, and so they will be coming in to anchor the energy. So you may say, OK, what does that mean? There may be one of us that works with you. And um, see again, Shelly's picking up on energies coming in uh, through the door, right? <laughs> um, so, so what is what that means is that more and more of us are going to be interacting with you, and as we interact with you, it helps to not only trigger things that are inside your DNA, but it also helps to bring in more of the energy, more of the flow that is coming from the universe, and the more that it can be anchored or or. It's not like it's positioned because it's always there. But if you think about that, if you think about the way in which energy is just flowing all around you, it's just here and there. And then the more that it comes down into a particular person who's then anchoring it into the earth, well, that's one more time it's been anchored into the earth. And then you multiply that times hundreds of thousands of people and it's anchoring all of those times into the earth. There are many, many other groups that are also doing something similar. They're there are many individuals that are doing this without being fully conscious of what they are doing. So it's not about you saying, okay, I'm here. I have the alignment anchor. If you do that, it certainly does help, but it's not necessary. Uh, people can just be in the flow, live their everyday life, be in the energy of love, because this is, of course, a love frequency, and that's all you need to do. Okay. Now, these energies that are coming from the Omniverse, they are coming from um, other universes that have already moved through this ascension. And many of them have been waiting for this opportunity to come in. With the Earth plane moving into this level of frequency, there is a ripple effect that has gone through your entire universe. What that, is, what that indicates is that the other planets have now shifted their... 
think about the way that you have interconnections with one another. You have your friend over here. And when you're with that friend or talking or whatever, there's a flow of energy that goes between you. And then you have your child, your work people, your, your, your husband or spouse. And, uh, and in doing so, each one of these times, you're creating a flow of energy or a connection that not only the connection that you know about by speaking about and by being in physicality, but there's the energy of that connection. And this is what is shifting, is a part of the shifting into a higher frequency. So as that interconnection is taking place between the humanity, it is also taking place between the, the stars, the planets, the aspects of your universe that create the universe that is around you. And so think about it that way. Okay, now we're able to communicate with Arcturus. Now we're able to communicate more fully with Pleiades. There are so many planets in your universe and uh, there are going to be certain ones that are already at the forefront to work with you so as this ripple effect has gone through the entire universe it has allowed not only your relationship say with some of these primary planets to go from something that is vibrating at say just a level three to now going and vibrating at a four five six um, so that's just to give you a comparison that's not talking dimensions per se but as that is all happening, there are other individuals that are out in the omniverse that said, I can go into this universe now. I can participate with these people. Many, many, many did not want to drop their vibration or frequency so as to be able to communicate with humanity. But now that the earth is where it is, you will begin to hear from many, many, many more. Okay, then there are others that have been a part of yours, you know, Brisentia, Elbeon, they have been a part of the ascension and a part of creating the DNA for humanity from eons and eons ago. So they have been in and out of the earth plane, working in many different ways, as they have told you over the years. But what's different now is that it is allowing them to let go of their lower vibrational frequency so that they can now manifest and and vibrate at a higher frequency and what does that mean to them hallelujah it makes them feel better it's less time that they have to go and recover from lowering their vibration to be to be with you and so it is going to allow all of these relationships to move up into a higher frequency this is but one little part of what is going on so I think to say that um, that this has been a powerful eclipse, and, and again, this is the culmination of many other things that have led up to this. You cannot just insert one change and it's going to manifest throughout everything. It has been step by step by step by step. And throughout the years, there have been some times that you made two, three steps up and whoop, got dragged back a little bit, and then you had to do it again. Um, and so it's been a give and take come and go and now you have arrived now you have arrived i feel as if uh even though i am well i suppose in some way i am a part of all of this but i feel so happy and so excited um, for everything that has taken place as if I did it myself. But uh, but it was you that did it. It was you and the rest of humanity that were choosing to shift into the higher frequencies and you've done it. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Okay, um, I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to say and then we'll get into the questions. Um, I don't know. It'll probably come up through one of the questions that people ask, and um, we'll just see where that goes. So we'll go ahead and start the questions, Alexander. Question for Crystalia. How do you start building a vocabulary for the new colors and sensations that is coming more and more? What a great question. All of you... It's a thunderstorm coming in. We can hear the, the thunder. Um, so hopefully the internet is going to be strong. Um, but Shelly was saying that it's been out earlier today. And um, so if we disappear, so sorry, we'll try to come back. <laughs> anyway, but whoo, big, big thunder that just happened. Okay, where was I? 
there's going to be a lot that is not in your vocabulary. Some of it may be the names that are associated with these individuals that are coming into work with you now. Some of it may be the names of this, not, not just the individual names, but the names of the whole species. Some of it may be the planets or the stars that you work with. So all of these things that are coming in are going to have something that is different to you. There are certain things that are going to be alike. So when it comes to things like colors, that's a discernment that's a defining way of describing something and so it too is going to have different colors that that um, some of these names you guys will decide for yourself say um, I know it sounds crazy but there is a color called clear and what the color clear does is that it really magnifies and amplifies and reflects outward all of the other colors around it. So, well, some may just say, oh, in this situation, the colors are amplified. No, they're not amplified. They're being filtered and blended with the color clear. So that's one thing that um, that you'll be seeing more of. The other thing that may happen is that sometimes a color may be a blend of other colors. And so you'll, you guys will decide, oh, this is the name of this new color. And they'll all, they're, that for the time being, there'll be someone in the background that says, oh no, that color's always been around. You're just calling it something different. But there will be some colors that are completely different and it's because they did not show up on the spectrum of color that you had when you were vibrating at a lower frequency. But as the frequency rises, there are more colors, more, a lot of different things that are going to manifest for you. And some people will just hear and learn and know what the color is. Others, it may take a period of time. Um, and so if you see a color, do this hey, what color would you like to be named? Or, hey, as a color, what would you like to be named? And um, and you guys may get, get certain discernment from that that you can use. But yes, absolutely more colors are coming in, more words, more people, more species, etc. Good evening. I understand that I am a soul fragment and chose a variety of timelines, but can I also travel energetically to my linear past and change decisions uh, made earlier so that my timeline in my timeline so that my reality will have a different outcome? It is absolutely possible for everyone to move forth through their timelines. There are multiple different ways that you can do this. One way is to go back through your soul. Your soul is like the inner cog of all these various like lifetimes that you have had. So when you go back to the soul and you say, you know, I'd like to find out where I first started having trouble with relationships or abuse or whatever it may be. And then from that cog, you may see different lifetimes and things that come up for you one way to do it a second way to and then you can go into that lifetime and you can heal what you need to heal and then say send that healing down through all my lifetimes before and after on every time level con con consciousness the other option to do is to just go into meditation and connect with your consciousness of you the person in this lifetime and then as if you see that path people do it two different ways sometimes it's like going from your unconscious like back from you as if you could turn around and see this road stretching out in front of you other people like to do it as if they're standing perpendicular to that road and you can see here's today's date here's the date i was born and you can see everything kind of in front of you whatever works for you it doesn't matter it's all about the intention so if your intention is to connect with yourself in this lifetime then um, you can go back and and heal whatever it is you need to heal so that's number two number three is that you can connect to that that um, timeline for this life if that's what you want to do and then say is there a parallel lifetime is there another life existence that is very similar to this lifetime but where I may have made different choices and that's a way of finding out different opportunities for how you can do things and some of these choices that you make so there's no one right or wrong way of doing it it's about understanding that this is all through the consciousness and I do know that people can heal the past and it has an Im impression coming forward 
this is one of the things that Shelly's done with many, many people, including herself. And as we'll just use her example then because it's in her brain. Um, back when she was first opening up and she was doing a lot of healing with her heart, she had gone on a hike in the mountains and she came to this place where she knew she had another lifetime that was maybe 150 years ago. And, um, and in that lifetime, she saw like step by step by step what was happening to her. She was a male in, in that lifetime, uh, Native American, but had a deformed arm, which at that time they would just let them go out to die. But he was picked up by a trapper who then raised him. Okay, so that's the overall story. So then as she recognized most of this and she went through a process of healing and loving and nurturing and helping that person in that lifetime to um, be open to love, then um, she saw like a total difference to the outcome of what had happened from the first time that she saw him. And it was because she connected mentally, emotionally, spiritually with that experience. She understood that it was a part of her, that it was her soul uh, that was having that experience in the past. Uh, well, linear past because it was, I don't know, 1830, 1840, something like that. And, um, and then after the healing of that, she felt an immense peace. Um, and now this was all done at a waterfall up in the mountains. So then the next few days after that, she could see how she was reacting differently to the people around her in life. In other words, where this, this, it was a heart centered issue. This is as her heart was opening up. Um, so whereas people would trigger her or she'd shut down, she was suddenly feeling like, oh, okay, how can we make that better? And she was feeling more compassion for herself as she was feeling compassion for whatever those relationships that had been bugging her. So that's, way more than you probably wanted to hear but just to explain this is one of the ways in which you can heal the past and it has an impact on the current day um and and that's not the only time that 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 this that she has done this many many other healers out there have done the same thing and had the same effect so it's it's about what works for you and if you want to have someone facilitate that for you that's always a good idea but whatever whatever works for you Okay. If this is a planet of polarity, how is the polarity going to change in the new dimensions? Will there be the dark energy? So in the third dimension um, frequency, when it was the low vibrational frequency, the dark and the light were very, very far apart. Um, and it was a very distinct, this is dark this is light. Um, there was not much overflow until the last, what, 20 to 25 years when you guys have been consciously focusing on raising the vibration, bringing in more light. So that's narrowed what was vastly different down into much more of a gray area. And the, the fluctuation of the polarity is not nearly as much as it was. So when these polarities change, we know that there's talk about the north and south is going to change, that there are other ways that the, the planet is going to change. These I do not know. However, what I do know is that there are still going to be times when people have an aspect of themselves that needs to be healed, but rather than it being something dramatically different and a big, big deal, it's going to be less of that, um, what do you call it? Less uh, difference between the light and the dark. This I speak about from within each human. Now, looking at light and dark on the entire planet, the there is going to still remain some because it shows the contrast but as to all of this evil that you have seen all of the horrific um behavior of humanity that is going to stop um i wish it could stop immediately uh, but those breaks have been put on and it is already being removed uh, energetically so the way that that will play out in the physical reality I'm not 100% sure, but it is coming. It's been initiated. And, um, and I'm not just talking about in human trafficking and stuff. I'm talking about the disrespect that people have for one another. I'm talking about the, the violence in your shows and in these computer games that the kids play. Um, all of that is going to lessen, lessen, lessen until it is gone. Okay.
Is that it then? All right. Well, welcome to this new era. Welcome to the golden age, the age of Aquarius, whatever name you want to give it. Welcome to the age of love. Welcome to the age of joy. Welcome to the age of infinite balance throughout your consciousness, your spirituality, throughout every aspect of who you are. And know that things will unfold in such a beautiful way. Thank you as always for having me on Saluia. Greetings, it is I, Brisentia. I thank you as always for this opportunity to speak with you. I too have been very connected with everything that is going on on this planet. This is a time of celebration. And even for those individuals that might not know what is going on, they might not have any idea just saying, well, I'm choosing to celebrate. Or this eclipse was a big deal. Or the energy is just different. I can just feel it. I can see it. I can know it. Whatever it is that you want to say, start speaking up. Start expressing yourself. I loved it how this individual said, did you notice that everything looks clearer? Or the, the color, or that it looks different? Indeed. And it will become more and more and more so as the time goes on. I will also say to you, because we're speaking about this at this time, that um, pay attention at least for a little while. And you yourself may see that because your mind, the more it sees something, the more it becomes accustomed to it, the more it just kind of tucks it in the background and forgets about it. So it may be very quickly, or it may happen very quickly, that you forget it was ever darker than what it was now. So, so pay attention. Make this something that you are entraining into your consciousness so that you will know and you will remember what this is and how amazing it has been. Okay, so I wanted to share that. Now, let's speak for a moment about the DNA. As was spoken in multiple different places by we, the universal beings, but also other individuals, this amplifying of the energy, this raising of the energy, this impulse of energy that, like we said, it had planets that lined up behind it in addition to the, the ships that are here, in addition to the sun and the moon and everything that was coming into, coming into being. All of that is what put together a group of energies, although 98% of it came from the sun itself, which is the soul of the universe, which is the soul or the God source um, of everything. And so you could say this all came directly from God and from the God energy. When, it's so hard to say, in one part, with time being nonlinear, there are things that you may consider millions of years ago that I might consider only a hundred thousand years ago or a million, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to say. So I will try to make this as linear as we can. There have been multiple different groups of people that have lived upon your earth and some of very high frequency, others of very basic frequency. There have been times when different groups of people lived in different parts of the planet. And in doing so, this is when we were working with the DNA. We did that. It went through its whole process. Those people died out because it didn't have enough to support it going forward. So whenever one of these eons took place in which there was a full ascension on the earth plane, then, um, then things kind of went back to where they were before. We're not saying in a day or a week, but over a few hundred years, things were backtracking and going back the other way it was. And then we'd go through that whole cycle again and again. We have done this at least five or six times. So when this cycle or eon, if you call it, when you consider that is what, 26, 27,000 years ago, something like that. As we were getting to the end of the previous cycle, 
and as those that are the galactic federation or those that are the the um ancient ones as some people call them those of us that have been the caretakers of this planet sometimes in monitoring it sometimes in um sending in influxes of energy whatever it was that it needed when we recognized that oh shoot it's not going to work we're not going to maintain it again there's too much of the heaviness there's too much of the density um that was during the time space reality that you call atlantis so some of you say oh that was only a few thousand years ago it was more like 26 thousand years ago it was it was the end of the last eon and the beginning of this eon so we literally have been working for these 26 thousand years to say what needs to happen what needs to be different and it's kind of funny to me because as i'm saying this there was somewhat of a detached energy and you can certainly feel it now because that's where we got to there was not a detached energy at the time we were all saddened we were upset, we were frustrated, uh, we were angry. We went through that whole gamut of emotions because yes, Pleiadians do have emotions, but we've had time to adjust with that. And if some of you think back and think into your own consciousness, you may say, yeah, I remember that. I was there, I remember that because many of you were there. So we've had 26,000 years actually even longer than that to work for this to figure out what needs to happen to understand how we can make this ascension so that it's not going to be temporary so multiple things came into play number one the entire universe had to ascend in the other times there have been other planets within your galaxy that ascended but then there might be something at the other end of the universe that kind of was a ripple effect that brought everything down so throughout this period of time multiple multiple planets have been ascending some of them ascended what would be the equivalent of 10 15 thousand years ago and they've just been moving on and doing their own thing so the last of the planets that needed to ascend is what has been working on and these are the ones that were very much um what's the word infiltrated by the draco the drake the drake the what were they called draconians um the reptilians uh those that were incredibly negative that initiated all the um eating of people and the things like that and so we knew that they needed to be removed from the universe in addition to being removed from the planet so this is why we've been working so diligently for all of this length of time and it did happen it did it only happened a few years ago that's why when this was supposed to take place in what was it 2012 um it didn't take place because that energy was still a part of the earth plane but they were working very diligently there were people on earth that were time traveling back and forth to figure it out there were those of us from the universe that were time traveling back and forth to figure things out and it was only once we finally got the the um what was you called the hub or the 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 anxious the the center of the bee or the one that sent everything out to all the different planets once that was taken over then that was the final release of that energy and that's when we all knew this is going to happen take walking backwards in time we knew in 1987 that the consciousness of the planet was going to go through an ascension but we didn't know how it would look or how permanent it would be then in 2000 there was of course all the nefarious things that took place and and there was some question is this going to happen is it not going to happen so more and more of the energies of the universe that have been working with all of you began to come towards this part of the universe so as to work with humanity and help to clear out these things in an in an intention of ma making it possible to make this the final ascension so because that was taken out all of those negativities and they were part of other planets so this is what allowed these last residual planets to move through the ascension now time space reality is different so it may seem as if did that happen in the last one or two years no it was more like 50 years ago in earth time frame but the time frame out on other planets is just a different perspective 
So that was number one. The entire universe has moved through this ascension and therefore it's all of the planets support one another on the higher vibrational frequency. Number two, we took out that, which was the foundation for all the horrific negativity that kept feeding, 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 feeding um, off of the negativity on the earth plane. So they've been gone for several years now, but those that they trained as their peons um, have been working to, to still do what they were taught to do. And so that's what's perpetuated it. And so now they've been taken out layer by layer by layer. So number three, what makes this permanent is that we are now activating those aspects of your DNA. That does not mean that everybody is going to zip right open immediately, uh, but each one of you will get more and more and more of your abilities that are going to come back into you are going to come back into your consciousness. They've always been there. They've always been a part of you. And as you know, there have always been certain individuals that were much more um, spiritually advanced, like think about the, the people in Tibet, think about the yogis in India, think about the many different people that could levitate, that could teleport, that could do all these things. Uh, many of the native cultures could do all these things because they kept that ancient knowledge and they kept it alive and they kept working with it. So things like that were never lost. And those are the individuals that have throughout time said, don't forget, we can do this. Don't forget. And so now here you are at this time, and it's going to gradually get more and more and more and more of humanity that will tap into these gifts and these abilities. It is a potential for every single human on the earth plane. However, as you are very well aware, the vast majority are not going to do anything about it, and you know, at least anytime soon. But that was what was awakened during this eclipse energy and during that energy coming in. Um, some of these people I was listening to you said, you know, your body aches, headaches, um, stomach aches, sleepiness, feeling disoriented. All of those are symptoms as these different aspects of your <coughs> of your DNA is activating and beginning to integrate within you. So what does that mean in another way? It means that um, the times in the past, which go back to your soul, which goes back to those timelines, as they talked about earlier, when these aspects of your DNA were already activated and you were working with them and using them all the time, that is one way that you can tap into it. You don't need to say strand 26, blah, 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 you know, nothing as specific as that. But simply in my other lifetimes, when I have been able to see much more clearly clairvoyantly, when I've been able to teleport, when I've been able to um, use telekinesis, when I've been able to, what, whatever it is that you're interested in doing, begin to create a bridge or a link that will take you from where you are now into that experience and then bring it back into your consciousness here. For many of you, you just shut this down. You know, you think, oh boy, don't, don't, don't know about that. Um, and so you have a tendency to just shut it down. However, um, as you are consciously reaching for it, it makes it more um, activated within you. So the next question that I'm hearing from people is, well, what about all of the normies, as you call them, those that are not as yet awake? Well, this is still activated in their DNA and it is still working in their unconscious. And so when it gets, at, so, so where's your DNA? It's in your bloodstream. It's in the cellular structure of your body. Um, you can look through it, you know, your hair, your teeth, all the parts of you have aspects of your DNA within it. So as your blood is flowing through your body with this expanded DNA, it replaces the blood in your body over, we don't know, I don't remember, what is it, every 26 days or something like that. But over a period of time, everyone replaces all of the blood in their body. So consider that, that you're, you've, you've been hit with this energy, it's activating strands of your DNA, but then as your blood keeps pumping through your body, as things keep going through you, you will gradually become more and more sensitive and understand things better. So it's a wonderful, wonderful time to be here on the earth plane. 
And I am very excited to continue to be a part of it. In fact, well, I mean, Shelly's got a list of about five classes, but wouldn't that be an interesting class to talk about and to see how can we activate or touch into, tap into these aspects in our DNA? So Shelly's like, put it on the list. <laughs> One of these days she'll get to these classes. <laughs> All right. What questions do you have for me this evening? Hello, Shelly. Will we need to have at least six weeks of food and water in Canada? No, you do not. Nope. That is not going to happen. Um, what they're talking about here is a complete shutdown of the entire grid and the entire system. And um, we had the upgrade. We had the activation a couple of days ago. And um, I still see it as periodic places. Well, Shelly herself said, well, her internet was down this morning for periods of time. And um, and then it came back up on her cell phone that it was down for eight or nine hours one time. So these types of, of sporadic outages will take place. But, um, but my sense is that you will be just fine. That being said... Um, Let's just look if there's going to be a shortage of food. I'm not even getting that there's a shortage of food. I think that a lot of that is put out by the fear mongers. And, um, and, and it's people that are looking at that old timeline. Remember, we have now blended things together. And we are now stepping into something that is really literally being created by you guys as you go. So that is old energy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's probably going to be a common phrase. Old energy. Old potential. It's not going to happen. So um, if you are in a location where you've struggled to have food or water or things like that in the past, like during that COVID time or something, and it helps you to feel more comfortable, then by all means, go ahead and do so. It's certainly not going to hurt anything. But as to looking at society, as to looking at big blackouts in different places around the world, I just don't see it. I only see short periods of time and I do not see people running out of food and I do not see people running out of supplies. When will Trudeau and his cronies be gone? Will Canada recover soon after he is gone? There is a government that is working in the background and um, and once he and, and everyone is gone, he'll go down at the same time um, Biden goes down at the same time the people in England goes down. It's like all of these major countries that have been working in cahoots with one another, they're all going to go out at the same time. And um, um, there is already something in the background that's been prepared that is already actually working in a lot of ways. So once he goes down, they'll say, here's the next step. Here's the next option. Uh, if we were to talk about something like this, like if they were to take him down and then um, they said, okay, he's gone, twiddle, 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 what are we going to do? That would just cause nothing but chaos. So so something's already been created, it's already in place, and it will just step forward. Same with the U.S., same with these other countries, um, so that there will be an ease in the transition of everything that's going on. Okay, so as to when it's going to happen, you know how we dislike that. I will say this, since the equinox, the energies are even more intense for them. They're becoming even more uncomfortable than they could before. I take it back. That's not even them. You know, those are just fake people that are acting as them. Uh, but any real live super nefarious people like that, this energy is going to be very uncomfortable for them. Um, and so that may cause them to lash out, which will cause them to be found, which will cause everything to, to begin to speed up. I, when I look at it one month from now, it feels like it's in motion. When I look at it two months from now, it feels like it's done. So I would say within the, the next one to two months from this day, what is the date? The 10th of April. Um, yeah. And, and the reason that I sense that this is going on. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting a download. They're still talking about how they're going to do it. Are they going to start with Canada, then go to the U.S., start with the U.S., go to the Canada? Um, it feels like there's some question about, are we going to take them all out at the same time or start with one? Uh, but whether they do it all at the same time or one by one by one, there's going to be a very short time frame between them. It's almost like, let's bring down one of them 
shock the whole world, i.e. shock the whole world, with what's been going on, and then, oh, and it's here too. Oh, and it's here too. Oh, and it's here too. So it, it may be that they all come out at the same time, or it may be um, a ripple effect like that. And But it's with these energy changes, you cannot hide any longer. They just can't. The, it's, it's Think about it as someone, this 10,000 watt light just shining forth and people cannot hide from it any longer. Whew, okay. Will the financial system turn out turn to our favor after Trump gets it's going to be before he gets back in um, the financial system is already running in the background it could be it could be it could be that they say okay all of this is fake and it's all coming down and oh by the way part of what they did was steal from you so we're giving you back money and Oh, by the way, they changed the dollar system and we're going back to the to the precious metals. And, and so it's going to be like everything is going to be very connected to one another. But be clear that the financial systems are running on the new system. However, most of the people, when you get down from those people at the top, if you go into your bank, if you go into uh, your manager, a lot of them are going to say, what are you talking about? I'm still doing it the same way I was. However, if you say, yes, but have they changed the computer system or have they changed this? Oh, yeah, they've done that, but they didn't know that that's what that means. Um, and and so be aware that uh, as it goes on down, not everybody at the lower levels is aware, but it's been two to three years, if not longer, that that upper level of all the shenanigans has been out and gone. So it's had three years now of filtering everything out and in implementing the quantum financial system. And that was completed two years ago. And so it's been running in the background for two solid years. So the transition is going to be quick and easy. It'll just be basically telling you, oh, well, we changed two years ago and this is where it is now. So it doesn't feel like that in and of itself is any big deal. But what people do want to know is when they hear about how they've been stolen, how, how their money's been stolen, how things have been misappropriated, and that money that comes back to people, that we feel happening in, um, feels like May, June, May, June. Uh, but we've said that how many times? At least eight or ten times. So um, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> when will our physical ascension symptoms subside or will we always have them? No, you will not always have them. They will subside when everything is fully integrated within you. And for some of you, this can take a long time. For others of you, it can be very, very, very quickly. Um, many people have felt it in different ways. Like at certain times, it's really intense. At other times, they don't feel it as much. Um, but all of these symptoms, we I would say many of them can release by within like three days of the eclipse, which is just tomorrow. Uh, but that, you know, it, don't, don't even think about it that way. Instead, think about how can I be more balanced? How can I be more integrated? And the more each one of you is integrated as yourself and with these new energies, then the easier it's going to be for you all the way along. So um, you know how people will have their story, um, which is, you know, I've had this in my life and this trauma and that led to this and poor pitiful me and never got a break. And, you know, all of those things that help to shape who you are. So the next layer of that or, well, 10 steps up, the next level of that is, oh, I can't get past these ascension symptoms. So I want you to not think of it that way. I want you to instead consider that I am integrating a new frequency. I am a new frequency. I am vibrating at a new frequency. And in doing so, it's going to manifest that the ascension symptoms are gone because I have manifested a new frequency. Or instead of I'm, or, or I'm in the process of manifesting it. 
Um, just because the ascension symptoms is something that's been out there for about 20 years and many, many people over that time have attached energy to it. And so we want something clean, new, fresh, you know, sparkling. And um, so let's call it, I am ascended. My I, I, I have occasional symptoms as I ascend. I am ascended, what, whatever word. If that sounds too strange or freaky, freaky to you, then, you know, come up with something that works for you. But be aware that it's going to be, people are going to be even more sensitive to not only words and phrases, but to intention and realities of things that are around them. So just to be clear, it's really important for everyone to, um, what's the word we want to use? It's really important for everyone to be able to um, vibrate with the clearest intention of who they are, live their lives, live their reality from their heart and from a place of love. And that's what will make a difference. Okay. Woo. So speaking of symptoms, whatever it was with that question, Shelly felt very disoriented at some point she kind of lost her train of thought and was feeling a lot of like fluttering energy to the side so um indeed in all the different situations um don't be surprised if you just feel different like things are just different okay i have a question there were sparkling things in the sky what was that did the evils release a bio in the air not sure what I have no, I mean, when were there sparkly things in the sky? There have been multiple, multiple things that have happened in the sky. Um, sparkly things such as a vehicle or such as a chemtrail or just don't know what you're talking about. Um, was it part of the eclipse? Was it, I have no idea. So let me see if I can just tap in and figure out something more. So let me just say this, the nefarious ones have very, very, very little um, money and things available to them at this time. And it's getting very quickly less and less and less. Anything sparkly would just offhand cause me to think it's of a high vibration because they want to, they don't, you know, sparkle and light and bright is the opposite of what they would put out there. So, um, Honestly, I don't want to speak too much because I truly have no idea what this person's talking about. But I will say this because people will come around again and again and again about chemtrails. Um, there are no, there. if there's anything negative coming from a chemtrail that you can sense or feel, um, it's a very short period of time that that's going to go on. Uh, but we have also seen others of the light vibration and frequency putting out um, things in a chemtrail that neutralizes anything else that might have been put out in a situation but even those are going to become less and less and sometimes they're just exhaust in the sky um and not anything one way or the other okay how has the eclipse impacted the ulbs and the other galactics it is allowing us to vibrate at our more, at a, it has allowed us to vibrate closer to our normal vibration and frequency. So we're not having to step down to a lower frequency. This in turn allows us to be able to communicate more freely with all of you. This is allowing us to come into the earth plane for us to interact with people. We've been doing so, but frequently it had to be in your sleep state or in your meditation. Uh, but now as the, not immediately, but but as this continues to integrate and then, you know, meaning that the energies of the eclipse integrating and the, the vibration of the planet rising, uh, the more that that will happen, then the more that we can manifest in, in a physical form in, with and around you. You will remember how I think it was Elbion mentioned the last time we talked, there has been a transition of those that were on the mother ships and in some of these ships that are coming in and out of the earth plane because those that their focus was to input the energy to 
clear out the past, work with the really low vibration or the low density things. They don't need to do that anymore. So they've left and they've gone on to do whatever else is their next thing to do. Some of them going home to their home planets just to spend time at home. Um, and so these people that are here now are much more of a higher balanced frequency. And these are going to be the ones that are now working with the ships and working with coming into the earth plane. So our communication is easier. It's, um, um, where it's going to be easier for us to manifest and and work with all of you in a, in our human form. Don't forget that some of us may just put a, a, what do you call it a hologram of us as a human just because that makes it easier for people to see us. Um, and so we may look different in our true form or we may manifest as our true form. Uh, but we'll we, we can do any one of those things. So it's going to be immensely easier now that this is complete. I have a very rare blood type and have done extensive research and I didn't find any scientific evidence that would explain any significance to my own negative. Okay. So let's see. What are there? A, B, A, B, and then positive and negative for all of those. And then O, positive, O, negative. Okay. So the O negative is a universal donor because O is, is more like the neutral and negative mean there are no antibodies or anything in it for someone. So if ever there there's someone that needs a blood transfusion without all the filtering that they would usually need to do, O negative can do that. Um, and so what does it represent? It represents one of the um, universal beings. Um, it's not Pleiadian. Um, you do recall how when we created the uh, the DNA that made humanity, um, that the blood types have all been made and they were made back at that time. However, the discernment and what you call them is what is limited to the knowledge that you have at this time space reality uh, because there's there's different things and different nuances that go along with that. But what this individual is indicating as an O negative, um, there's been some question or some thought that people that came in with O negative, are they directly from the universe? Are they um, um, Andromedan? Are they, does it represent something? And yes, there is, um, it's, it is not very common because most are A or B or a combination of the two. So even O positive is not, not as common as the other two. Uh, but my perception as I look on this is that each one of you, when you were created, as you know, you're the blending of your parents. So your parents have, you know, both of that in them. And as we follow, as I follow humanity going back, it does go back to the time uh, like that O negative. What would be the equivalent of that? Back when we were creating the various forms of humanity, that O was like, what do you call it? Um, the still point, you know, and then you could try this variation and this variation and, and then blending of those variations. But the O was the, there's a word for what I'm thinking of. Um, like, like what everything is, is, is it's the constant and other things are formed, um, off of that. So, so O negative is like saying that you are one of the ones that there's a word for this. When a science experiment is going on, they have something that they use as the foundation and then all of their trials are different things over here. So what is that called? Does anyone have a word for that that you can help me with? Um, anyway, so this individual does not have any of the, um, the blending of these other um, aspects of the bloodstream. This is like that more uh, direct, I hate to say a direct descendant because that's not really true either. I guess the best way of talking about this is that this is an undiluted type of the bloodstream that um, that this individual has at control group. Okay, so it's like 
it's like she is a part of the control group where um the everything else came off of that and um and so as o negative it's never been disturbed it's never been changed or even as they took everything and they tried it they still came back to here's the control group O negative and so that's what that represents and that's why there are so few of them and that's the <clears throat> kind of getting into a little bit of the uh the background of it all of you are connected to the universe all of you have different aspects of your energies that are associated with one planet or another that came out of the universe and um so to say that O negative are the direct seeds of the universal beings, sure, but so is everybody else. It's just this different variations. So I know that I'm not answering that very well, but I hope that that answers her question. And what does it mean to her? It's like getting the lucky card for her life. Well, unless she needs the transfusion, then... <laughs> But anyway, no, it it um it does tend to have a better health for the individual and um and it is very in uh, it is very individualized and um so but don't fixate on it. It's just a thing. Like blonde hair, brown shirt, blue eyes, you know, it's it's just a thing, so don't fixate on it. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Thank goodness. <laughs> Is that the end? Well, how about that? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm good. So beloved family and friends, this has been such a pleasure working with you. So Shelly just looked at the clock to see the time and you will notice that we are speaking more quickly. The last time we talked, what was it, an hour and 50 minutes or something like that? It's not, it's not even, it's barely coming up on an hour and two of us are done. So this is one of the ways that you will notice the changes in, um, in energy, that things can happen more quickly because it moves through the energy with greater ease. So excellent. Thank you as always. And I am absolutely manifesting for many, many of you on the earth plane. Aunt Saluia. Greetings. It is I, El Bayon. I'm just sitting with these energies for a moment, becoming accustomed to, to Shelly because her energy is different. So let me sp speak about that in reference to that, that last question. So... We stream our energy through Shelly and, and she speaks out the words that we place in her consciousness. It, we, I take that back. That's not really it. We merge with Shelly. And so we are speaking out our own thoughts, our own words. And sometimes we're bringing a group energy in through us, but it is us speaking to you and she is but the vehicle. So speaking of the vehicle, this vehicle's energy is absolutely higher than what it was before. And she had a pretty high energy all along. So because of that, as we merge more fully with her, we're able to speak more quickly. Sometimes what happens is when she talks about, ooh, download there. So sometimes if there's too much information and the roadways get blocked or there's a congestion up here, then it all just kind of stops and pauses for a minute and then it again filters down the way it needs to so um this is this is the way that she has channeled and she's channeled us for a very long time and so that's why it's always been comfortable in this manner but there are many many people where the human was speaking and the other energy was like outside and sending you know boxes of information down into that individual um and so that's something that will change if that's the way that an individual was channeling for each one of you in your everyday life as you move to this higher frequency you will begin to have what is more of an expanded consciousness on a continuous basis and for some of you 
in the past that has meant oh my goodness i'm overwhelmed with energy i'm overwhelmed with um influx you know this influx of energy and stuff and in that experience what would happen to you is you would just kind of flatten out need to take a break need to go go away so as you are living your life having your experience and this flow of energy is going through you with the higher frequency remember that the higher the lighter the frequency the easier it cuts through things so the easier it moves through your consciousness so instead of you being stuck in a low vibrational dimension where it has to move through a heavy thick wall around you it's like whoosh it just comes through very easily and very quickly so therefore in your everyday life you are going to begin to have experiences where it feels like am i meditating am i in this reality am i in that reality am i seeing things on multiple timelines all at once so there may be a bit of a disorientation so if ever you feel disoriented then just stop a minute take a deep breath in center yourself bring all everything back into your heart center anchor if you can and um and then it will help you to come back into the moment but don't be surprised if you feel like where am i what's going on and it is because all of this energy that used to be filtered out from you is now going to be able to come in through you that gives you the opportunity to choose do you want that do you not want that do you want to say to your consciousness no don't do that no i don't want it like that no you know stay out there and and maybe filter a little bit more and many many of you may prefer to do it that way especially at the beginning and then as you become accustomed to this new frequency and and this new energy and the way thoughts and ideas and conversations even can just come down into you then um at that point you just let in more and more and more of that frequency some of those ascension symptoms what what did she, what did she call it i was just laughing my head off because ascension symptoms is a much better way to call it <laughs> but some of these symptoms that you have been feeling and some of these um energies that you feel as you move through this transition they're very very real and for some people they're very strong um however be aware that um that they will get easier and easier and easier and go away until it gets to the point where you will no longer notice it in in any way shape or form okay so there was one other thing i wanted to mention so speaking of the ways in which um the the beings that are supporting here are changing i mentioned the last time about in particular um, New Jerusalem had a change out of of their of their people. So let me speak of just my own ship. I have my own ship. We are Arcturan. Uh, we will go in and out of the mothership, but we have like a fleet of us, and we kind of stay together because we're Arcturan, and and we kind of keep to ourselves. Um, most cultures and most country not countries, um, their planets most planets will like to stay in an area where their other planet their 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 own people from their own planet or the planets most closely associated because some of these places like you go from country to country they go from planet to planet so each one forms like a community that is associated with their own people and um nothing wrong with that not 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 saying it as a judgment just saying that this is just how things get done that doesn't mean there are only arcturans on my ship i have many different species that work on my ship with me my ship is a very large ship and then we have the smaller plasma ships that go out from it uh, but we have the healing beds on it we have research done on it and we have ways of teleporting and communicating with others and so so we work with one another but as a rule we have a tendency to want to kind of stick with our um, stick with our friends and family and you know co-workers as you call them that you will recall or maybe you don't i believe it was in earth time a year ago maybe 18 months when my family came in to to join me on this journey and i i had some of my siblings that were working with me and um and so they're on my ship they stayed for an extended period of time and now they have gone on to where they're going there was that slight chance that this wasn't going to happen as it did with the eclipse but um but once everyone realized it was going to happen and 
my time is not coming to a close that in a way that you guys need to worry about it. But where I've been here for literally one to 2000 years, um, I'm not going to be here for another one to 2000 years. I am coming to the completion of what I am here to do. That doesn't mean I'm leaving this month. It doesn't even mean I'm leaving in the next 10 years. It just means that after looking at it in terms of a thousand to two thousand years, I am coming to the completion of what I need to do. Presentia, on the other hand, um, she's going to be even more active coming in and out. You will have other light beings that will com continue to communicate with you, but I too am continuing to communicate with you. I can hear some people going, no, no, don't go. I'm not going anywhere. But it's important for you to understand and think about what you've been going through. You've been going through a transition where sometimes you had people you were super close to, and then as you grew and evolved, and maybe they didn't, well, okay, we're not going to, we don't get together as much anymore. And um, sometimes you might have been in a particular job and you learned everything you needed to learn from that job, and then you moved on to something else. So there are so many different reasons for why this is happening, and it's all very good. It's all um, a joyful experience that we have. Okay, I'm open for questions that people may have. What will happen after another cycle of 26,000 years? Will there continue to be peace on here? Yeah, that that's already been addressed, um, I feel. No, it's it's that's completely unwritten now because we do not see going backwards this time we see this as a permanent ascension because the entire universe has gone through a permanent ascension the other planets around you have gone through a permanent ascension and um the the future that far out is unknown it's still being created can you look into the mysterious monoliths placed around the planet over the last years there's the medium tall square pillars and the stainless steel so there have been many things that were placed around the planet in the most recent years that were put there by the nefarious ones, and those will all be taken down. There are other monoliths that have been placed there by ancient beings, and those are going to be activating, and they're going to be vibrating and sending out stabilizing energies, and some of them will again become the antennas that they used to be for beings that are coming in and out of your planet, but those that were done by the nefarious ones are all going to come down. The Kennedys are so prominent in politics. Why? And can we expect a successful bid for the White House by any of them? And are there others? Is the is the seat of our poser moving from that area? Grateful and thankful, dear one. I'm very confused by this. I think I know what you mean. But when they're really long questions like that and we have to process through Shelly reading it and it's not Shelly here, that's what makes it kind of break apart. Just FYI, in the future, if you guys can keep them simple, that's that would be very helpful to us. So speaking of the Kennedys and speaking of politics, see, it's really hard to say. I don't know that the Kennedys per se are going to be um, part of, they were absolutely a part of this ascension. Uh, they've absolutely played a part in it throughout the last 50, 60 years. Um, well, even before that, they were, they were participating. Some of that family, not so good. Other parts of that family, uh, you know, the, the, the white hats and the white energy that was creating the foundation for what was taking place now. Um, there is another form, just as with that individual asking about Canada, there is a form of government that is already enacted and it is already working in the background. And so that will come up and that will be a transition period. And um, But all of the governments are going to change. They're not going to have the same types of control and manipulation. I mean, it's impossible because the energy is so different, um, but there will be new. And at this point, I do see individuals that are going to come up um, that will be a part of this new system. But um, the Kennedys, I'm not getting a great yes on that. I'm getting more of a neutral flat energy about it. And yes, um, 
Kennedy Jr. is going to come out and he is going to make himself known. But his whole purpose, his whole reason for doing everything he's doing has been to do it in the background and to and to figure out things and to do all these many, many things that he's been doing. Um, but I do not see him wanting to be president. He, he does not want to be president in my perception. Greetings, Elbeon. Thank you for your messages. What effect did the eclipse have? Well, we've already been talking about that. The effects are that it has broken down the last of the really heavy negative energy. It has shifted the entire planet through every single human activating through their DNA into a higher, lighter frequency. And as a result of that, there will be no tolerance for all that horrific stuff that's been going on. There is, it is still happening. There is still, um, what do you call that? Human trafficking that is happening. Um, however, that is going to become less and less and less, and it will be resolved. The problem was that human trafficking went on in the universe. It went on on your planet. It was not only on your planet. That was something that was brought to your planet by other individuals. And that's why it got so much worse um, over the last 20 to 30 years. Um, but it has been eradicated out in the universe. It is in, being eradicated here on this planet. There are a couple of planets that it's still like at the same phase you are. Uh, but it is going to go away and it will not be there anymore. And, um, and as a result of that, then the whole vibration will sit more comfortably in the higher frequency. The other thing that will come along with that is you will see less violence in the movies. You will see less violence in the interaction between people. There are still people that are very nasty, nasty people, but they are not going to tolerate this. That doesn't mean they wake up today and they fall over dead, you know, it's going to be a little bit more insidious than that. Uh, but there, those that are the worst of the worst will either transition off the plane or they will have to ascend. They will not have a choice in the matter. They cannot pull people down anymore. Are the ULBs aspects of Shelley? I met many of my aspects and integrated many of them. Uh, no. No. Um, we are not aspects of Shelley. Shelley has worked with us as her universal being in other situations, but we are not any of us um, aspects of Shelley. And it was decided that way intentionally. Um, she knew us, like we said, when it was decided that she would do this job that she's doing, um, it was, we, she knew that she needed support. And so we have all worked very closely with her back during Lemuria. And she's been here on my ship with me. She's worked with um, Brescentia. She did not know Crystallia as much, but knew that that would be coming in. But I and Brescentia, my, you know, the two of us in particular have worked directly with Shelly, but none of us are her aspects. What is going to happen to Julian Assange? He's going to be fine. Uh, he's going to be released and everyone's going to be like, why were you, why were you? held again what was going on there's going to be a sort of amnesia that takes effect um when all of this transition and all of this information comes out that has to do with um with the nefarious ones uh there's going to be so much shock that people have not as much as it could have been because of what you guys have done however there are going to be a great number of people that will in turn say um gee whiz what was that about again why was there a problem with that? And so some of these things that were, because they were put forth as a, they took a lie and made it into something and, and they put energy behind it. So when you remove that energy, then that lie kind of collapses in on itself. And so there will be many different instances that will seem as if, um, what was that? And people will be questioning, did that ever happen? Your whole history, there are many aspects of your history that are authentic but maybe misinterpreted or misskewed. So there will be over a period of time, the more authentic history, you know, unbiased, not now being told by our bias, but unbiased history will be brought forth to humanity. 
and um, it's been kept in the Atlantean um, tablets. It's been kept up in Tibet. It's been kept in off-planet places, uh, but it has not been lost. It has been lost to the consciousness of humanity, but we will bring it back in as the time is right. Anything else? Hmm. Very interesting, right? So this is what we're speaking about. Energy moves more quickly. We, we, okay. So let me also remind you that anytime any of us are talking, we are sending downloads into you. And some of the times, the reasons that we needed to talk and use so many words was because we were sending downloads into people and people weren't getting the downloads or it was taking time to integrate into people's um, unconsciousness. So now that things move more quickly, you know, we don't, we don't have to talk as much. We don't have to use as many words and the downloads that we're continuously sending to everyone they just go in a lot smoother and easier. So it is my pleasure to be here throughout this process. I am thrilled that we are where we are. This is a powerful, powerful time on earth. So I invite you to embrace it. I invite you to embrace all of your own changes as they come to you because change is here. Ansaluia. Wow, that was a lot faster. Can, can, okay, question for everyone. Um, did the energies feel any different to you? They sure as heck felt different to me, but I'm accustomed to that because, you know, um, I, I work with these energies all the time. So I'm accustomed to, oh, wow, lighter energy today, or oh, wow, I can feel a difference. So I'm curious if you guys felt the difference too. If you want to say a yes or no in the, in the um, chat. <sighs> and I'm not as tired as I sometimes am. Sometimes when I get off of this, I'm just like, oh, I got to head to bed. Okay, Carol says yes. Karen says yes. Awesome. I think it's just going to get more and more and more easier to put through um, this information. And I think, yes, it felt more clarity. Excellent. Excellent. And Carol said she felt happier. There was more happiness or happier. Excellent. I love it. I love it. So B it, it's just going to get, it's just going to get better and better and better. It's all uphill from here. You know, you've been doing the heavy, heavy, heavy stuff that brought you down. And so, so now it's just going to go into a higher, higher, lighter vibration from here. And it's just going to get better and better. Let me see. Yes, it's more positive. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it felt lighter. It felt lighter. I think the change comes also from more understanding in the audience. Exactly. That's exactly true. The energies are more positive. Brilliant light. Ooh, I love that one. That's a cool one. Thank you. And um, I can't wait for the lighter energies for like three weeks. I don't want to do much. Great. If you can do that, if you can chill out and take some time for yourself like that, that's awesome. I can't wait to see some of the difference in our families and friends, you know, that aren't as aware of this. I think that's going to be a super cool part of this all. All right. So I'm just going to let you go for tonight. Thank you for being here as always. Um, have a wonderful couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.